Everyone, <coughs> everyone, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so I hope everyone is having a really wonderful day. I'm really excited. I've been waiting to make this video for a very long time. So I want to introduce you guys to a new series that I'm going to be starting in my channel. It's going to be three parts. Yes, I said three parts. And in this series, I'm going to be making my favorite Jamaican food. Wow, how can they be making Jamaican food? Where are you getting oxtails from? Where are you getting curry powder from? Like, where are you getting all of this stuff from? Answer, honestly, from different places. <laughs> A lot of the stuff, particularly the meats, I got them from the foreign mart located over in Itaewon. I'll link it down below, the Google Maps location of it. So, in this series, I'm actually going to be making three dishes. First, I'll be making, I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's like top three. And that's stew peas and rice. It's typically salted pig's tails. Yes, pig's tails. The tail of the pig. And it's kind of braised, stewed with beans, usually red beans, and all types of spices and coconut milk. And it's served with like rice, like white rice usually. And then you also add in some like these things called spinners, which are basically just like flour, water, dumplings. You don't have to leave everything behind. You don't have to leave your, fo your food and your culture behind when you um, leave your country. You can actually adapt. You can find new things. You can find new ways of making things. You don't have to feel like you can't eat the food that you're used to, or you don't have to ever feel like super homesick. With that said, let's get started on the pig stales. First, I'm gonna add about a cup of dried red kidney beans, and then I'm gonna add about enough water to kind of cover the beans, maybe 400 or so milliliters of water. I'm gonna add that. Chicken suck, chicken cubes. We're gonna kind of crush it up a bit so it turns into a powder. You can add kind, of, you can add basically whatever seasons and seasons you want to this. I'm just kind of making it in the style that I know. We have some dry thyme. We're gonna add about a tablespoon of thyme. I have some mixed seasoning. It's garlic and it looks like shallots. We're gonna add also about a tablespoon of this marjoram, lovely spice. A tablespoon of this. We have some black peppercorns. This many black peppercorns, like a little handful. Throw them in there, a little more for good luck. I'm adding a quarter of an onion. My onions are pretty big, so I think this will be enough. You don't really have to cut it up. You can just throw it in there whole like this. And then finally, we're gonna add a little bit of garlic that's been pre-minced already. And that is about all we need so far. So we're gonna give this a quick stir. Let the spices and everything blend together. We're gonna partially cook our beans. And then after that, we'll cook the everything else. So give this a cover. Jesus Christ. Close. So we're gonna cook this on high pressure for about 36 minutes. The total cooking time for this will be about 54 minutes, 52 minutes, but we're just gonna partially cook the beans first. So let's take a look at our pig's tails. It's pretty big. Like, here's a kitchen scissors for sale. It's about the same length as it. What we're going to do is we're just going to kind of chop this up a bit to make this into uh, bite size, not bite size, but man more manageable pieces. Also, by the way, this is really fatty, the vast majority fat and skin. So um, keep that in mind if you haven't had that before. If you're not a big fan of fatty cuts, maybe Pixtel isn't going to be your favorite, but it's at least worth a try. Okay, let's see if I can cut through the bone here. also a little frozen so okay all right so that's not too bad I'm gonna keep doing that for this and a few more pieces all right so it's been about 36 minutes and then I've been letting it naturally release for 15 minutes because I was busy so this is no problem we're just gonna turn into venting let the air come let the steam come out of it it's mostly come out we're just letting it we're just letting the remains out also, while that was cooking, I went ahead and chopped up the pig stales, and then I also chopped up some cubes of beef brisket. This is about half a kilogram of beef and half a kilogram of pig tails. The beef is optional. I just like to have something more chewy to, you know, in my meal. So yeah, I'm using them. So this is about a kilogram of meat in total. So this is done. We're gonna open it up. Ba -ba. 
So if you're cooking this on the stove, you should cook this until it's about maybe, I don't know, maybe 60% done because for the last hour or so, it's gonna continue cooking with the pork and the beef. So you can take a look inside of it. The onion has given all it's got. I'm gonna take it out. Well, actually, no, I'm gonna leave it in there. Why not? I'm gonna leave it in there. It'll continue to add some flavor. Uh, you can see that there is still quite a bit of liquid left in the beans and the beans are, they're still quite tender. They're not fully cooked yet. Let me try them really quick. Yeah, still quite tender. The flavors haven't really infused in it yet. I'm gonna go ahead and add the meat to it. Okay. Kind of mix this around a bit. Okay, so that's in there. And so now that we've added meat to it, we actually have to rebuild on the seasonings because the beans are perfectly seasoned, but we have all this meat that hasn't gotten any love yet. So we're gonna add some onions, about a quart of onions that have been uh, sliced. We're gonna add some green onions, about maybe four stalks of it. By the way, I forgot to mention that all of this stuff, like apart from the pig styles that I ordered online, I got from like a store here. The beef I got from the Foreign Martin Ite one. I'll link it down below. Um, a few of the seasonings I got from the Foreign Mart, but the vast majority of it I got from like the local Nongmin Mart like down the street. You don't realize it, but many of the ingredients that you cook with in other cultures are very common across the world. Like things like onions, scallions, garlic, ginger, like that's everywhere. You don't have any issues finding that. Anyway, I'm gonna add some more spices to it. I'm gonna add some fennel. I actually bought this at uh, E-Mart. You can add some marjoram that I bought, I believe, at the Itaewon Foreign Mart. This is kind of to taste, but I'm, rough, I'm adding roughly about two tablespoons of everything. We're gonna add this seasoning, this garlic onion seasoning. This is where the salt is coming from, so I'm gonna be a little, a little heavy-handed with this. Some thyme. Some more. Black pepper, ground black pepper. Okay, we're gonna give it some creamy, creaminess to it. We're gonna add some coconut milk. This I got at the Foreign Mart, but I'm actually sure that you can get it at like Nagmin Mart or e, e Mart. So we're gonna add a whole can of coconut milk. This is 99.8% cream. I don't really cook with coconut milk, so I'm a little worried that it might come out a bit strong, but it's okay. Just gonna add it in there. It solidified a little bit, but no problem. Wow, it's like really, really rich. Gonna give everything a mix, so it's gonna go from this dark burgundy to like this light, kind of really delicious creamy looking co color. So it's gonna give everything a rough stir. Okay, all good. We don't want to add too much liquid to it because here in this Instant Pot, like, liquid does not really go away. I guess that's the whole point of it, that like the steam and pressure build up, but liquid does not boil down. And honestly, I've seen so many recipes where they finish cooking everything in quite a bit of liquid and then boil it down, but it takes a really long time and I don't want to do that. So what I'm just going to do is not add any more liquid than I need. In all honesty, I think about a half cup of liquid truly is enough for most recipes, depending on how much gravy you want and how much uh, soup you want, depending on what you're making. So before we continue, I'm actually going to be making something called spinners. They're basically flour water dumplings that get added to stew peas and rice. This is going to be very simple. We're just going to add some about, this is about 80 grams of flour. We're going to add a little salt to it. Give it some flavor. And then all we're gonna do is add about a cup of water and we're gonna make a dough out of it. Now I've actually never made this before, so <laughs> I hope it turns out well. My grandmother would like just throw this together really quickly while she's cooking. Um, so I assume it's easy. 
and I'm not sure if she put sugar in it. I don't know what exactly she put in it, but I'm pretty sure it's just flour and water and probably some salt. Flour, save me, please. When I tell you, like, I have a phobia of dough, like, I, me and dough are not really good friends, like, quick story, I used to make biscuits a lot when I used to live at home back in, like, I think high school or something, or middle school, I used to make biscuits, like, literally like, every single week, so that would obviously require a lot of dough handling, um, but it was always kind of a struggle, it was never really easy, it never really came out consistently well, uh, so me and dough, not really the best of friends ever, especially one day I made like, I tried to make noodles, came out like ass, wow, yeah, wow, but like when it comes together, it's really nice actually, like I'm not gonna lie, like it's coming together pretty well now, um, I think dough and I are, we have a positive outlook on our relationship going forward, it's participating, to be honest, I don't know what I'm going for here, like, I think I want to go for a little more. This is something that you have to be able to roll into, like, little spindles with your hand. So, and from what I've seen there, it has to be quite dry. It's not like a wet dough. Okay, I think this is okay. You know what I mean? Like, it is what it is. I think it's okay. Like, this is supposed to be something that's very easy, very low maintenance to make. Don't want to overcomplicate it. Okay, so we're back. Now we're just gonna like form like little, fuck, this is, it's kind of too sticky, but, ah, it's too sticky. Okay, so we have a dough here and what we do is very simple. We just take it and then we kind of like, just get like a piece of it. And then make like a little, roll it up. Damn, I'm getting flour everywhere. I need to flour my hand, ugh. Kind of roll it up into something like this. kind of cute and just like this and just pop it in there boop okay so once those are all in there my camera's about to die I'm just gonna say once those are all in there we're gonna put the lid back on and then cook on high pressure for about let's say 17 minutes um, if you're cooking on the stove you want to cook this until the beef and the pork are soft so about 45 minutes to an hour all right, so our final part, we have these, um, honestly not quite sure what to call them. Long story short, it's almost impossible to find plantains here, at least for me. And I did some digging around, some Google searching, and it's apparently these are probably the closest I'm going to get. These I found in the ET1 foreign mart for, I can't remember how much, but they weren't expensive at all. It's just a bunch of green bananas. Um, I believe they're from the Philippines. Yeah, they're product of the Philippines. I believe they also sell them at Emar in Yongsan. But I really am craving plantains, and I think these are the closest I can actually get to them, as far as I know. So I'm gonna just slice these up and fry them for my, you know, plantains. Okay, so here's what I'll do to them. I'll cut the tips off like this. I'm basically, I'm basically doing the same thing I would do for regular plantain. So cut the tips off and then slice it down open. Oh, I just almost cut myself. Yeah, these are basically miniature plantain. Like they have the exact same feel. And I do believe that the difference is that once these are ripe, they essentially are the yellow plantain that you actually would just eat normally for breakfast which is different from the green plantain where once it gets ripe like you still would cook it it's much much starchier than a regular banana and then you see it's very tiny if i was making big ones i would make like kind of slice them up make tostones but i'm just going to give these like rough like kind of uh, big kind of chops like this something like this I think this will be okay, just in half. So let them fry to their golden brown. Drain them on paper towel, get the oil out. Throw some salt in there. 
give them a shake. Okay, so we're all done cooking. It's been naturally releasing for 14 minutes. I did put it on for a total of 16 minutes. Uh, what I'll do is start venting. Ah. Up, 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 up. Oh, wow. Huh. It's a different color than I expected. So anyone who's had stew peas knows that it's supposed to be like this burgundy color and it's not quite that. Um, I do think that the coconut milk, oh shit, I, the coconut milk separated. <laughs> I remember seeing that you shouldn't really put cream and stuff like that in the pressure cookie because it will separate. But I mean, other than it not looking very good, um, it seems like it's cooked pretty well. The dumplings seem pretty cooked. The pig stills. I'm gonna get a chopstick and test this out. Going in, so going in with the chopstick. If it pierces easily, it should be done. Goes in pretty easily. Does it come out? Yep, it comes out. So, I mean, it doesn't look great. Also, I should have boiled the uh, pig stale first. I did forget that. It tastes kind of watery. I feel like I should cook this down a little more. Let the water kind of evaporate. Give it a chance to maybe the cream to kind of re-emulsify. Let's try that. All right, so this is the final dish. We have the stew peas here. We have the rice here. We have some fried plantain. And now it's time for me to eat my dinner. So everything is all done. Now it's time to actually test it out. Uh, I'm sure it's gonna taste amazing because I'm cooking it. So first, let me, you know, get some rice, cleanse the palate a bit. Delicious, obviously. I'm gonna dig into the beef. Mmm. The beef is good. It's a little tough. Um, well, not tough, that's not the right word. I think what happened was that because I finished cooking a while ago and I let it sit, that it did kind of stiffen up a bit. But if I did reheat it properly, that it would taste a lot more tender and soft. Or if I had just eaten it immediately after it was done. But not that big of a deal. Um, as far as the flavor goes, it tastes basically just like what I expect. This is the dumpling. It tastes really good. I'm getting like a lot of, I don't know. I'm not really good at dissecting like flavors and stuff like that. Just know that it tastes pretty good, especially since again, I'm nowhere near home and I was able to put out a pretty decent authentic, dare I say, Jamaican recipe, stew peas and rice. I hope you guys like got something from this video. Um, it was definitely good for me to make. I really enjoyed it and I've been craving it for a long time. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please give it a subscribe. Let me know in the comments what food that you're curious about that you want to maybe see me cook or maybe see me talk about as far as getting the ingredients goes. Let me know how you make your stew peas and rice. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Catch me on the next episode. I'm pretty sure I'll be making an oxtail next, but I don't know. Depends on what I'm craving. All right, guys. Bye-bye. See you next time. Wow.